you're here to learn Figma because you want to design websites, apps, or some kind of digital graphics, well, let's not waste any time. Go to figma.com, sign up for an account, and you can start right away in the browser. But it's better to download the desktop app. Click New Design File. And this light gray area in the middle is your canvas, where our beautiful work's going to appear. At the bottom, we've got a toolbar. You can move things around. We'll come back to that. The next options is our frames or sections. We're going to do frame. Click and drag to make one. Let's undo that and use one of the presets. Click F to select frame again. Click desktop. And it gives us a desktop website type frame. The next items are the shapes. You can draw any of these common shapes. Let's click ellipse. Click and drag to make an ellipse or hold shift and you'll get a perfect circle. You can also go over to the properties panel on the right and type in the dimensions. So let's do 104 pixels for our circle. We might use that later. Next is the pen tool if you want to draw more complex shapes or the pencil tool if you want to scribble. Next to that is text. We just click anywhere and you can start typing. Let's type smart choice. The reasons why will become more apparent later. And this is just like any word processing software. Just make sure the thing's selected. You can click on it on the canvas or you can go over to the layers panel on the left and click on the item there and it'll be selected. And then let's change the size of the type up to 96 and the weight to bold. You should start with inter. That's usually the default font on there. And then we can change the letter spacing as well. Push up to make it bigger, down to make it narrower. Minus four looks good. And we can click anywhere on the canvas to deselect our text. Next item on the toolbar is the comments. Just click anywhere where you want to leave the comment. Uh, type in some witty comment. On the left, we have the pages and the layers that we're using. You can add multiple pages and all the layers appear here for anything that you create. And as I said before, you can click directly onto the layer to select something. So I'll select the desktop that way. Let's first of all, with the desktop selected, change the fill color. But we're gonna go back to the hex and I'm gonna type in a reference here. 17152D. That gives me this dark purple. Or you can go to a gradient. That's the next option. You can also fill it with an image or with a video in the background. Let's go back to gradient. Let's change the second one to a different color. 532BDC. Now we can click and drag our gradient around by clicking on these white solid circles that are next to the color on each part of our gradient. And you can add more stops to this, but let's start with something like this. Now we'll click on our text again on the canvas and we're gonna change the fill here. I'm gonna type in a value here, you can do it directly. F9 DADA, 100% for this light pink. So this pink, I'm gonna make a style of this. So I'll click plus. I'm going to type in the name pink and then I can reuse this anywhere I want on my design. So you can drag this around to move it. That's one way to do things, but you can also use these position tools. So it'll align it all the way to the left or to the top. For now, let's do the horizontal center and the vertical middle. If you want to align things accurately, you can also use a grid. This is a square grid. So if we change that to 120 pixels, we change the opacity of the color of the grid line so we can actually see them. In fact, red on this isn't great, so maybe we'll use this kind of greeny yellow color. But more often, if it's on the web, you're going to be using something like columns, like a 12 column grid. You can set the margins and the outer, the gutter, the space between each column, change again the level of the opacity. And this helps you align your objects consistently. Let's get rid of that because we don't need this for this quick demo. You can just press Shift and G to show or hide it. Zoom out. I'm going to hold down Alt as I click and drag to make another one of these canvases. Delete that. Another way to do it is just copy and paste. Control C, Control V or Command C, Command V as I'm using here on the Mac. Now we have two desktop canvases. I'm going to uh, frame, sorry, I'm going to edit this first one and type the word flux. I'm going to align it again to the center. Now to scale this, we can also use this tool scale. Let's go and select it at the bottom, the shortcuts K. 
And if I hold down Alt as our option as I'm dragging, I can scale from the center. So I'm going to make this just go off the edge of the uh, frame Back to the move tool and just, just slightly tighten up that type a bit. And look, if you drag it like this, it won't work. Command Z. So you need to be make sure you're on the scale tool when you're scaling the objects. That's definitely one thing to be aware of in Figma. Let's move this comment out of the way. Shift Command K to import an image. Or you can just copy and paste the image or you can just drag it from Finder from a folder on your computer. So now I've got that in hand, I'm going to click and drag it out. You can see it drags it with a sort of messing with the aspect ratio. So if we hold down shift, that'll just make sure it maintains the aspect ratio of the image. Now you can zoom in and out. You probably see me moving around by pressing command plus or command minus. You can also press Z and click and drag to zoom. So now I'm going to change the size of this image. I click on the image. I can type into the width 1440, which is the same as our desktop. And again, I can align this to wherever I want. I'm going to align it to the center. You can see it's covering over everything right now at the moment. But what I want to do is use that type as a mask. So I'm going to select both layers, right click on them and click use as mask. Hey presto, the image is masked within the text. And because this is a mask, I can move things like if I click K again and scale the type, it carries on scaling. So I'll just do Command Z. If you click on the image again by selecting it in the layers panel on the left, you can have some basic image editing right within Figma without having to go to an image editing program. So we can mess it with exposure, contrast, saturation, tint, highlights, shadows, all this kind of thing to get that how we want. Another way to transform the image is to use a blend mode. So I'm going to add another fill in here. And for the color, I'm going to use that second purple that we used in our gradient, the lighter one. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to go to this icon for blending modes. And I'm going to change the blending mode to color. So now the whole thing has this purple color overlay onto it. Okay, that's the basics, but you can do almost all of this in any design program, even PowerPoint. <sighs> Let me show you what Figma can do. Press T, and then we're going to type Learn Figma. If your type has been changed, we're going back to Inter Bold 96 minus 4 on the letter spacing to get this to look exactly the same as mine. I'm just going to click on it and drag it over close to my circle. Then I'm going to click and drag to select both. Then I'm going to press Shift A. And this puts these not only in a frame, but using auto layout. And this is one of the really powerful things about Figma, that we can use auto layout to arrange things uh, according to the, the rules and the spacing that we set in the properties panel. I'm going to put a stroke around it of one point, just so we can see what we're actually working with. I'm holding down Z there, <laughs> just to zoom in. Let's go back to 100%. I'm also going to add a fill to this of white. Now let's change it to the pink that we've got saved. Let's change the color of this ellipse actually to this dark purple and this type also to dark purple. Let's save this dark purple because we're reusing it as a style. And click on the button. So let's adjust the space between these items. We can click and drag to do this to see what it looks like visually. And I think somewhere around 80 will be good. Then for our left and right padding, I'm going to set that as 80 as well. And for the top and bottom padding, we can drag that out, see what feels right. I think it's going to be a little bit less, 48. Looks good. Click and drag this button to move it to the side a little bit now. And we've not changed the color of our stroke. Let's also make that the dark purple. Stay within our libraries. And let's change the size of this stroke to 10. That's the line around the edge, the border, you might call it. Uh, uh, eight looks enough. So at the moment, the height is set to hug. So if we make these corners uh, rounded to larger than the height of this whole frame, it will turn the whole thing into a a pill shape. I'm just going to finesse the padding a little bit. If we bring that down to 60 on the right, 
it makes that circle fit nicer on the right hand side of the button so your settings should be the same as mine now and you can just copy them if they're not let's make another one of these buttons just hold alt and then click and drag on the bottom one i'm going to double click on its name actually on the canvas and change that to button hover that can be our hover state and then click back onto the top button and i'm actually going to change the the fill type in d f f c 7 d and we have this lime yellowy greeny kind of color click and drag on the canvas around both buttons to select them both then click on the down arrow next to the component symbol and we are, we're actually going to create a component set now components are things that you can reuse in your design and also use to prototype so we have a component set here now with the button and the button hover what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on button and then I'm going to, go to prototype tab and then click on interactions then select while hovering and the action is going to be that we're going to change to button hover so while we hover over it's going to change from button to button hover and we can choose the animation for this let's dissolve it with an ease out duration of 300 milliseconds just basically means it'll have a nice little fade on it you'll see that in a moment when we put this all together so if you click on the assets tab here you can see that we have this now as a component this button so we can click and drag that onto our desktop one canvas and uh oh what's going on here it's being masked so we need to select the two items originally in the mask and just group them by pressing command G hey presto we can see our button now let's call this background component one click on that we can align it again to the left or the bottom let's go to the middle and middle that looks pretty good if you hold down spacebar you can use the hand tool to just drag around your canvas and that's what I'm doing there so let's prototype this thing so if we click on the button then just click on the prototype menu you can see there's a little plus on the edge if we just click and drag that over to this desktop it will give some options here so yes on click we want to navigate to this other frame desktop 2 and that's going to dissolve as well we can play this flow now to see how it works let's make it full screen so you can actually see it hover over the button yep we get that nice hover transition to the pink click on it and we navigate to our next page you've made something the last things you might want to do is share this Figma is very collaborative so you can share this with uh, colleagues you can share it with clients and choose the access that people can have whether it's just to view or to edit and comment on it you may also might want to export these as stills so if you click on export when selecting any frame you can select the options like at 1x scale we're going to have a jpeg at 2x scale we might want a png you can also do scalable vector graphics or pdfs then click export and save that somewhere on your computer to take the next steps in learning figma follow along with our long form tutorials here on the Flux Academy channel. Until next time, happy designing.